today's lecture we will uh, discuss about A to D converters. So, in this uh, we focus mainly on uh, not how to construct A to D converters, how to use them, how to make a error budgeting. Of course, we will discuss something about uh, uh, how to use the A to D converter using microcontroller and so on. So, our topic would be uh, analog to digital conversion. Uh, our, our topic would be analog to digital conversion. So, uh, basically we call A to D, uh, A ADC. Now, uh, basically what is done is that we have an analog voltage and then that voltage has to be converted into digitized. So, essentially that this is given to ADC and then the output comes in digital form uh, uh, say 8 bit converter means then you will have 8 uh, lines of digital bus. So, 6, 7, 8. So, 8 bit converter means analog value corresponding to uh, analog value you get a digital output of uh, 8 bit. So, this we call 8 bit converter and uh, this analog conversion is taking place with respect to reference voltage that is we used to have a reference voltage, we will have a V input voltage and output is digital. So, uh, what really happens is that uh, in the A to D converter if V in is equal to V reference, if V in equal to V reference then uh, if we have a 8 bit all 8 bits will be high. For example, if I have a 8 bits then this is MSB and this is LSB. Then uh, for for V in is equal to V output, V in is equal to V reference. For example, if I have 1 volt uh, reference, 1 volt and V in also 1 volt, then all the 8 bits will be high, all bits are high. For uh, V in is equal to uh, V in is equal to 0, then you will get all uh, 8 bits are 0, all bits are 0. That means, for 1 volt or uh, 1 volt uh, input, we have a uh, change of uh, all zeros to all 1. So, if we take a digital level binary level, total binary level is binary level is actually 2 power 8 that is equal to 256. So, essentially for uh, uh, 256 levels you have uh, 1 volt difference that means, uh, uh, 1 LSB that is what is the 1 uh, suppose if 1 least bit that is if it is LSB and if this is MSB for 1 LSB to change change the required voltages required voltages uh, 1 volt divided by 256 that is nearly equal to 4 millivolt. So, for every 4 millivolt roughly you will have 1 LSP change our way around if the input is say 4 millivolt if the input is 4 millivolt input is 4 millivolt the corresponding digital output would be uh, only last bit alone is uh, coming high. So, like that we can have a, a, a digital output corresponding to the analog input. This only we call it is a A to D converter. So, we use the term uh, LSP. So, LSP is the uh, least significant bit. So, for 1 LSP what is the voltage required? So, for 1 LSP for uh, 1 LSP uh, the required voltage is required voltage is V reference by 2 power n, where n is the number of bits. So, if it is 8 bit converter, then it is actually V reference divided by uh, 256. So, a 1 LSP value tells us what is the minimum resolution that we can get in the converter. So, uh, um, one LSP gives us the 
minimum resolution that one can get in using this converter. Resolution one can get using this converter. Of course, this depends upon the reference voltage. If the reference voltage is different for the same converter, you will get a different resolution. <coughs> converter. So, the LSP value depends on the reference, depends on the reference voltage. So, let us see if we are using the if I want to convert analog into digital uh, what are the options that is available. So, that I will get a digital value corresponding to the uh, analog uh, input. So, uh, let us see what are the types of converters available. Now, if you look at this the types of converters. Now, one is we call that is a dual slope entry converter which is very popular uh, converters real slope ADC. Then the second one is actually successive approximation A, A to D converter. That is the second type. Uh, third uh, popular type is actually uh, uh, flash ADC. And now the fourth uh, very popular one that is uh, available in the uh, uh, market is sigma delta IDC. So, we see uh, at this point of time this uh, four different types of A to D converters and then you see how it is working, what is the errors associated with each one and uh, how to use them for our best uh, uh, use. So, we will start our discussion with the dual slope uh, A to D converters. So, we will uh, pick up the dual slope AT converter and then discuss about its uh, usage and then the error associated with the dual slope converter and so on. Now, in the dual slope ADC, the classical uh, construction technique used is that you take uh, operation amplifier and then we will have a capacitor connected here as a like an integrator, then we will have a uh, input voltage V input which is to be digitized which is a, a digital voltage assume it is positive and they have R in. Then we will have uh, to this uh, switch then uh, we also can connect through a switch of course, so the switch can be uh, connected to this. So, what I can do is I can have a switch here. connected to this, I can have another switch, this can be connected to V reference, V reference and then through another resistance it is connected to the same, we call this is a R reference uh, resistance, then this is capacitor C and this is uh, our output. This is actually the circuit diagram of a dual slope A to D converter. Now, let us see how uh, how it is uh, working. Now, we name this switch as S1 and this one as S2. Now, if you look at the circuit, we have uh, two conditions that is uh, when S1 is on, for example, S1 is on and then S2 is off. We take the condition first uh, condition that S1 is on and S2 is uh, off. So, this uh, uh, is on and then assuming assuming uh, C is uh, uh, empty, assuming C is empty we will take up uh, this consideration that is S 1 is on. So, under under this condition that when S 1 is on then since uh, this uh, this at uh, 0 volt this also has to be at 0 volt. So, uh, when S 1 is on when S1 is on, I, I will call I input current that is flowing through I input flows through the resistance R through the uh, resistance R in. 
because the, since it plus and minus m are idea, idea, minus m is at 0 volt. So, minus input is at 0 volt. So, we can uh, say what is the current through R in. So, what is the uh, current through R in that uh, we can uh, find out. So, the current through R in I can write it as so current through I uh, input current that would be equal to uh, V in divided by R in because minus ML is at 0 potential that is the current that is actually going through this. Then if you look at the current through C then the corresponding current through C would be same. So, that is equal to current through C. current through C. Now, the uh, current through C is uh, known. So, the capacitor will be keep charging that is uh, that is when once I connect S1 on and S2 off then the voltage source V in actually charges the capacitor C. So, essentially uh, the input uh, that is that is the input source the input uh, source voltage charges the capacitor C, charges the capacitor C at a constant rate, C at a constant rate. So, the capacitor voltage is uh, built up. So, we should know at the end of the time what will be the capacitor voltage. So, uh, uh, capacitor voltage can be obtained capacitor voltage will increase with the time increase with the time but the capacitor voltage is same as the output voltage so the output voltage is equal to the output voltage that is equal to capacitor voltage So, the uh, uh, since the capacitor voltage is increasing output voltage also increases with the time. So, if you look at this in the for the given circuit that what really happens is that uh, if we plot in terms of um, time versus output if I plot that essentially the output voltage uh, goes in the minus side because V is a plus. So, the output voltage will be increasing uh, with the time. So, this is the time and this is the output voltage in the minus side it is increasing and this uh, uh, slope is determined by the current essentially V in by R that is the current it uh, decides uh, this one. So, if we write the equation for capacitor voltage. So, we can use uh, capacitor voltage can be obtained uh, capacitor voltage voltage actually is uh, uh, can be obtained by C Q is equal to uh, I T. So, Q is equal to C V. So, we can write I T equal to C V equation we can use and find the uh, capacitor voltage. So, capacitor voltage actually R output voltage is actually given by uh, uh, I T divided by C. So, the uh, I is actually given by uh, I is equal to V in by R. So, V0 actually is given by V in by R in V in by R in uh, R in then into T divided by C. So, that is that is the capacitor voltage or the output voltage that is the output voltage and that is same as capacitor voltage. So, the output voltage uh, and the, since it is the invert uh, due to up arm inversion we get a minus sign due to up arm inversion uh, due to uh, up arm inversion. So, that V 0 is coming as uh, V in by uh, R in is uh, I into T divided by C uh, that with minus sign. So, that goes to minus side. So, the minus sign is introduced to take care of the uh, 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 inversion. So, we take this that is the uh, equation for uh, V 0. Now, what is that it uh, signifies that is uh, uh, 
if I have the uh, if I have input voltage I make the switch on for some time that switch S1 on for some time and then I, I see that the output voltage increases with the uh, time the output of the up arm increases with the time. So, essentially speaking if you look at the uh, our uh, circuit that uh, when S1 is on the output voltage uh, slowly increases towards minus side and then uh, it continues for a time. Now, you keep this switch uh, S1 on for a fixed amount of time T. So, that the output voltage reaches some value and then it stops. So, what essentially happens is I will keep the I limit the time t that is this is voltage and then this is the time. So, the output voltage goes here and I keep this one only for uh, t on this is the uh, t on. So, uh, t is actually limited. So, keep s 1 on keep s 1 on only only for a fixed time fixed time there is T on. Uh, after th uh, this time then after after T on uh, time switch off switch off S 1 switch on S 2. So, you switch off S 1 and switch off uh, S 2. Now, once S 1 is switched off, uh, switched off the charging stops because you know the if you look at our uh, uh, circuit that we had that we have uh, uh, S 1 on and then that is charging through this V input and then we see the V reference that actually connected through S 2 to this uh, S 1 and S 2 and then our uh, capacitor is connected here. So, when S 2 is uh, on and S 2 is off and V r is minus V r given. So, minus fixed voltage is given. Now, you will have a current through this R in R, R uh, reference. So, that current will be opposite to that of the original current. Uh, switch S 1 is connected to switch, switch S 2 is connected to V reference connected to V reference through through the reference resistance reference resistance r reference now because of that the current through the r reference is now opposite and then capacitor discharges the current through the current through R R is opposite to that of R in. So, capacitor C discharges now. Now, discharges. Uh, so, the capacitor so the output voltage so output voltage start coming down. So, the output voltage V naught uh, uh, will start coming down, coming down. Keep S two on so that so that V zero becomes zero becomes zero after some time. So, essentially what happens is that if you look at the uh, our uh, original uh, curve that is the time versus uh, voltage the first uh, even S 1 on S 1 on it was going down the minus side and then it keep dec decreasing at a rate. So, here actually is a T on time and this is T off time here S 2 on and the output till it is S 2 on keep it on uh, till it reaches 0 volt. So, when it reaches 0 volt then again you restart and start S 1 and S 2. So, uh, you keep S 2 on still it reaches uh, still the output voltage reaches 0 that is capacitor fully discharges. So, now 
if we see the discharge equation, you see the discharge equation that comes uh, the because discharge current I discharge is actually is nothing but uh, V reference divided by R reference. So, the same using same equation I T is equal to C V the capacity equation that you will get uh, uh, the uh, uh, equation that is uh, uh, time to discharge uh, we can uh, write out. So, uh, uh, what really happens is that the voltage that again the same uh, equation comes I T by C is equal to uh, V naught. Now, since uh, the uh, discharge uh, ch uh, charge that went there to uh, at that time when S 1 is on uh, to the capacitor must be equal to charge that had, uh, uh, went out when the uh, capacitor completely discharged. So, total charge during S 1 on was total charge, total charge delivered, delivered to C when S 1 on is equal to um, I into T, I into uh, T and then uh, that is equal to V in by R into T. So, that must be equal to total amount of charge that left. So, total discharge current total that this is the on time. So, total discharge discharge is given uh, uh, S 2 on that is equal to uh, V reference by R into T of time this is uh, R this is R in. So, this uh, both must be uh, equal to uh, equal. So, what we can do is that we can equate these two that is uh, because total charge must be equal, total input charge must be equal to total output charge. That actually makes so V in by R in into T on must be equal to V R by reference stations into T off. So, essentially uh, if R in is equal to R R, R in is equal to R R then actually we will get uh, V in by V R V equal to T off by T on. The ratio of the voltage is actually now controlled by the ratio of the time that is uh, what was the on time and what was the R time. If this is fixed, if T on is fixed and then V R is fixed, V R is uh, fixed, then V 1 must be equal to uh, uh, V 1 uh, is proportional to T off. So, this is the that means, the input voltage is measured in terms of uh, time. So, if I can have a clock to measure the T off time and uh, keep the T on constant and keep the V R constant then my input voltage uh, uh, can be measured in terms of uh, off time. So, off time can be obtained using a clock. So, uh, you will get a digital output in terms of number of periods because I can have a digital clock and then that can be measured in terms of number of pulses I can count uh, and that uh, uh, T off period can be measured using the T off period can be measured by counting the number of pulses. So, the, that way the digital uh, output can be obtained uh, for a corresponding analog input voltage. Now, uh, see this the C uh, the capacitor value is immaterial because the capacitor value is not appearing in the final equation. So, the even the drift in the capacitor short term uh, the long term drift of the capacitor uh, is not a issue as far as accuracy is concerned. 
the uh, capacitor value the C is not appearing not appearing appearing in the final equation. So, the long time so the long term drip long term drift of the capacitor is not a issue. So, it is not a problem even if the capacitor uh, slowly drifts due to temperature. Uh, temperature drift also not a issue, temperature uh, slow drift of slow drift of the capacitor C. So, uh, so the slow drift of the the slow drift of the C due to temperature is not the issue because because T on and and T of are in milliseconds. However, there is one issue with this uh, capacitor C that uh, dielectric absorption of the capacitor is a major concern uh, in this application. So, uh, the, even though the capacitor uh, temperature drift and long term drift is not an issue, the dielectric absorption of the capacitor is a major issue. So, the dielectric absorption of the of the C is a major issue. Actually, the dielectric absorption uh, creates a problem in the sense that uh, the dielectric absorption uh, is explained like this that if I have a capacitor, if I charge it to some voltage V and then if I discharge it quickly by putting very low resistance, uh, then uh, you will find that after some time that you know even after removing this uh, resistance, if I remove this resistance, then I will find that uh, uh, part of the original voltage appears across in the capacitor. So, I, I, I we can show like this, if you are new to this, then I uh, you can follow this explanation uh, little bit which will be of uh, good, uh, which will be of help to you in the latter case. That what you can do would be that if I take for example, if I take a capacitor and charge it to uh, say 10 volt. Then the sec second step would be I remove this, uh, I, what I do is I will take this capacitor, put some few ohms, 1 or 2 ohms, 1 or uh, 2 ohms and leave it on for few seconds, few seconds. Allow the capacitor to discharge, allow the cap for discharge fully, discharge fully. Then third step would be from here that what you do is you actually uh, uh, make the, the this is first step then second you discharge. Now, after few seconds you remove the after few seconds remove the capacitor re resistance. So, uh, uh, remove the third step actually remove the load. Then the fourth step would be connect the meter after uh, remove the load uh, then connect the meter across this voltmeter across this good voltmeter. So, the fourth step remove the load then now connect the connect the high impedance multimeter. Uh, ambient uh, multimeter volt mode ambient multimeter that is in the voltage mode now you will find that uh, with the time the voltage is building up with the time 
with the time uh, v is increasing. That is, uh, some of the charge reappears on the capacitor charge reappears in the capacitor. This is a, a called a dielectric absorption. This is called dielectric absorption. For example, for electrolytic capacitor, this is about 10 percent, and if you take a ceramic, this is a, uh, 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 this will be around 1 percent level. For electrolytic, for electrolytic capacitors, cap, it is about 10 percent. The 10 percent of the original voltage will reappear. For ceramic, 1 to 2 percent. For uh, plastic film capacitors, it is less that is uh, uh, 0 0.01 percent to 0.1 percent. For example, polycarbonate have very low dielectric absorption. So, what is the problem? What is the problem with this dielectric absorption in the case of our dual slope ATD converter? So, in the dual slope AD converter, if we charge the uh, capacitor first, we are charging the capacitor first with the uh, V input and the capacitor is charged to minus voltage, that is the output voltage is minus and the capacitor anyway charged. Now, we are making the S 1 off and then making S 2 on. So, when S 2 on, uh, so we have S2 on and minus V reference is given, V reference, minus V reference. Now, the uh, capacitor discharges through this. Now, if the input S1 is very small, uh, then uh, this voltage would have been charged to some value and then it would have been uh, discharged quickly by S2. The next voltage actually uh, appears very large or uh, for example, next time that V in had changed then it will charge to very high voltage, then it will discharge quickly through S 2. And the third uh, time when again the low voltage comes low, then when it is start charging you will find that part of the earlier voltage is uh, reappearing. So, like it is like this. So, if uh, initially assuming, uh, assuming uh, first V in is large, V in is large, then cap C will then C will charge to high current then C then uh, C will charge high voltage. C will then you discharge quickly uh, when then then S 2 discharges C, C quickly. Now, if if the the input voltage are changed, the input voltage is changed to a lower value, to a lower value, let us say uh, f, uh, from 1 volt to 10 millivolt or so. Now, when S 1 is on, S 1 is on, S 1 is on, uh, this, this 10 millivolt will deliver small charge, will deliver, deliver small charge to C. But in addition, in addition, part of the earlier charge will reappear, part of the earlier, earlier, earlier charge also will reappear. 
start reappearing. So, this will affect the measurement now. So, this will the area uh, due to dielectric absorption. This will make the reading, uh, this will make our measurements wrong. So, this will make our measurements wrong. measurements to go wrong. So, uh, if the capacitor, if the uh, real slope PTT cannot have to work, the capacitor should have very low dielectric absorption. So, it is essential, so it is essential, essential that C is having very low dielectric absorption. So, uh, dual slope converter and the other main advantage of dual slope PT converter is it is not sensitive to noise. Uh, uh, dual slope converter so sensitive to no, uh, noise is used we discuss noise is used in dual slope converter. Dual slope converter is not sensitive to uh, external noise. This is because if you uh, see our uh, circuit, we have input coming to this through a resistance and then another switch and then you have a capacitor C. So, assume this is V reference minus V reference and this is input R input. S 1 is on for a particular amount of time. For example, if I do not do not want 50 hertz noise because if the, if the input signal is having a 50 hertz noise, then I can show that the V input consists of DC plus AC source which is a 50 hertz. So, the current that is going through S 1 R 1 kinds of AC current plus the DC current both are actually uh, flowing here. And then uh, if the T on the T on is integral multiple of integral multiple of integral multiple of nice frequency nice uh, frequency or nice time period. Noise uh, time period, period. Then, uh, then uh, noise is averaged out. That is like this. Suppose if I have a DC plus AC time versus voltage by plot. So DC is in this. And then over that, that AC is uh, going. Essentially, the current through this, current through this R, uh, will have uh, when the AC voltage positive peak, it increases the current. When the AC voltage negative peak, it decreases the current. So the net average charge delivered to the capacitor will be zero if the on time is integral multiple of the uh, nice time. For example, this one cycle. If I make it, for example. Uh, on time T on is few cycles say per uh, per to remove to remove 50 hertz noise it's nice the if if T on say equal to 60 millisecond 3 uh, cycle time cycle time because T on is fixed so I can fix the uh, time. So, if I keep the T on as 60 millisecond, then you will get average of 3 AC cycles. Then uh, your uh, average current of 3 AC cycles is obtained. Uh, then, then 
averaging uh, average averaging is done then for 3 ac cycles uh, this will ma uh, make the output insensitive to uh, noise because average charge delivered would have been average charge due to ac is zero the average the average average charge to due to due to ac component component is zero so as long as t on is integral multiple of uh, uh, noise time period then uh, the converter is insensitive to noise so the converter is the adc is adc is not sensitive sensitive to input noise this is the uh, special merit of this dual slope adc converter this is this is the uh, merit of the merit of the dual slope adc of course this is valid only if it's integral multiple of uh, uh, a noise frequency a uh, noise time period even otherwise also even if it's not integral multiple we will get uh, some averaging and only very small part uh, uh, of the ac signal will produce output voltage and that may not be very significant so this convert this kind of converters are very good from the noise rejection point of view but they are very slow because you had charge per integral multiple of uh, time and then integral multiple of uh, noise frequency and then you also have to wait some time to discharge so the conversion is very slow the disadvantage this advantage uh, conversion is very slow very slow advantage insensitivity to noise so these kind of converters are uh, even though it is slow they are uh, that is quite enough for a display purpose so these converters are used this type of converters are used are used for uh, lcd display etc so because anyway display cannot be updated very rapidly so at the maximum 10 8 to 10 conversions are possible uh, at the maximum at the maximum uh, 8 to 10 conversions possible so that is good enough for display so most of the displays today they use this dual slope ATD converter so the, uh, this is very popular ATD converter and they uh, almost all displays use this ATD converters all displays displays uh, use this type of converters so uh, this convert this kind of converters are available uh, for 3 and half digit 4 and half digit 3 digit and so on uh, for the use as single chip it is available one can uh, use them for example popular uh, 3 and half digit display 7 on uh, uh, industrial 7107 710 uh, 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 industrial converters uh, or uh, this type and you will get a ready made module actually with a display so you have a display unit with the converter inbuilt so you have a, a input is given here v input is given here and then the chip actually does the uh, dual slope converter and it needs a inbuilt reference and it needs a minus uh, supply as well you need a plus supply and then this can be directly interfaced to the uh, seven segment LCD display.
LCD display. And uh, this is the main converter. So, this is available as an integrated model which one can use for uh, displaying the values, uh, displaying the analog value into digital value. And this also can be used in other applications where I are in. We want to digitize, uh, but the noise should not enter into the instrument. But only thing is, it will be slow. For example, we can use a microcontroller and uh, do this kind of uh, conversion. So, microprocessor based uh, real slope ATD converters or microcontroller based. based converters, a, a slow a, a, a DC or when we are using a microprocessor based system, one need not look for this real slope A to D converter, one can easily achieve this kind of uh, uh, conversion function uh, using a microcontroller. What an, can be done is for example, there are various uh, techniques it is done. So, in the case of we have a microcontroller, uh, we can if I want to digitize the analog voltage the simplest thing they can think of would be if I have a microcontroller for example, I give the supply voltage. Then uh, what is done is the, uh, the V input voltage which is to be digitized can be given through a resistance and through a capacitor and it can be connected to one input port for example, V 1.0 I can uh, connect to this. Now that is uh, V in. Now, what I can do is that I can have a, a switch connected across this to T charge. So, I can have a switch connected here that is a MOSFET switch. Then that can be connected to another port say P 1.1. For example, if I take 8051, I can have a such a arrangement. What is done is that uh, uh, that is uh, I can have switch S1. <coughs> so, first uh, discharge the capacitor C fully by switching on. So, you discharge C, discharge C, discharge C uh, by switching on S1, switching on S1. Then then uh, start the timer, start the timer, timer in microcontroller and simultaneously, simultaneously switch, switch off S1. Now, uh, the input voltage will charge because now S1 is off. Now, the uh, whatever current uh, coming from so V in that will charge the capacitor C. Now, uh, uh, after some time that capacitor will charge to uh, some value. Uh, allow this S1, allow this, allow this uh, off condition, off condition for some time. Now, the capacitor voltage will slowly increase. Now, the capacitor C, C will slowly increase. Capacitor C will slowly increase. Now, we can have uh, for example, was many of the microcontrollers have uh, inbuilt uh, comparators. So, we can have this if it had been given to the input comparator and then if this is a, we can be given is a V reference, it is given to a V reference. So, if the uh, if this is given to the inbuilt converter, the uh, if the input is given to the plus input of the microcontroller comparator, now the capacity will charge, uh, the, now the capacity will slowly increase, capacity C voltage will slowly increase. 
uh, the comparator in the microcontroller, the comparator in the microcontroller will change state, will change state, change state, change state uh, once, once, uh, once the capacitor voltage, the capacitor voltage. Voltage goes above goes above reference reference fixed fixed inside the microcontroller. Uh, once state change occurs, once once state change occurs, state change occurs and in the comparator occurs, occurs the uh, timer in the timer, timer is stopped. That is, uh, we are charged the capacitor for a certain amount of time to reach the value, uh, to reach the fixed voltage uh, value and then timer is stopped. So, the uh, time period, the time period, time period uh, can be used, used to uh, calculate the input voltage V n. This is because uh, the capacitor charges exponentially uh, to the V reference. So, essentially uh, what is happening is if you plot the uh, equation that what happens is the time versus uh, uh, capacitor voltage, cap voltage if you take is exponentially uh, going up. So, we have started the timer here, uh, 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 timer is on, timer on here and then if this is a V reference, this is a V reference here V reference if the V reference is this then this is the uh, once it uh, capacitor voltage this is the capacitor voltage once the capacitor reaches the V reference it is stopped so this is uh, off here uh, timer off So, this is the time taken to reach the voltage V r. So, this uh, T 0 uh, period, the period T 0 gives you uh, period T 0 uh, gives you the uh, gives you the input voltage, but this is not a this is not a dual slope converter, this is not a this is not a dual slope converter. The capacitor drift, resistance drift all will give error. The capacitor drift, the capacitor drift, drift, resistance drift, resistance drift all will give error. Of course, the nice averaging is there, uh, all will give error. The second one is uh, uh, the nice averaging benefit is there, nice averaging benefit is available. but not completely, but not uh, uh, not completely because, because T on is not fixed, not fixed. It changes with the input voltage, it 
changes with the it uh, changes with input voltage. <coughs> Nevertheless, this is a poor man's uh, ATD converter which is used uh, uh, in the microcontroller world uh, extensively. Uh, the equations are there for example, more almost all the microcontroller manufacturers provide this kind of uh, conversion solution. For this purpose only most of the microcontrollers have uh, inbuilt uh, comparator. You, you can also put the comparator outside and then uh, you can uh, switch on and off the timer and uh, realize the A to D function even if you do not have a comparator in the microcontroller. But this controller can be improved, this conversion, this uh, uh, this conversion uh, con converter uh, uh, can be improved by modifying the circuit by modifying the circuit. Of course, some extra component we put modifying the uh, circuit. We can also obtain uh, dual slope ADC function uh, using uh, 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 this type of con modif uh, this type of converter. Of course, you will modify the charging and uh, uh, discharging method so that one can uh, uh, use in the microcontrol world the dual slope converter because dual slope converter has many advantages. As I said, the capacitor is not uh, involved in the uh, measurement and also uh, noise is not a serious problem. So, we will discuss about the modified uh, dual slope ADC converter in the microcontroller, microcontroller environment and how that can be used in the microcontroller applications we will see in the next lecture. Thank you.